beloved, if one concentrates one's awareness on anything, be it an empty space, a wall, or a worthy person, it will merge into consciousness and bestow enlightenment. From the Vigyan of Tantra, verse 33. In the mystical ambience of the Dakshineshwar Kali Temple, disciples of the revered Indian mystic Sri Ram Krishna Paramhansa searched fervently for their beloved Guru. Concern etched upon the faces as they scoured every corner of the temple grounds, their voices echoing with worry. After a relentless search spanning hours, they stumbled upon Sri Ramakrishna seated beneath a large tree, his figure bathed in the gentle glow of twilight. His head was inclined upwards, seemingly in a deep contemplation. Though his eyes were open, they remained fixed as a stone upon a picture of the Divine Mother Kali. His breath, though steady, carried the weight of Divine Communion. With bated breath, one disciple dared to break the sacred silence, inquiring of Sri Ramakrishna the nature of his transcendental state. Slowly, as if emerging from the depths of divine communion, Sri Ramakrishna spoke. I do not know how I entered this state. He began, his voice a gentle whisper carried on the breeze. I was gazing upon the image of Mother Kali. Slowly everything started to disappear. My mind dissolved into her divine presence. Time ceased to exist and I found myself in peace, enveloped in the sacred embrace of the Mother. Beyond this point, he found himself unable to recall any further details of the experience. This state is attained in the successful culmination of Tratak. What is Tratak? Swami Satyananda, in his discourses on Tratak, explains. The word Thratak means steady gazing. The practice of Thratak involves gazing at a point or object without blinking the eyes. It is a method of focusing the eyes and in turn the mind on one point to the exclusion of all others. Through this method, all the attention and power of the mind is channeled into one continuous stream. This allows the latent potential within the mind to spontaneously arise. In the classic Hatha Yoga text, Gherand Samhita, it is classified as one of the Shatikarmas, the six actions of cleansing the body and mind. Thratak is the last of the six because it concludes the physically oriented practice and prepares one for or say acts as the stepping stone to the mental practices that lead to higher awareness. In a sense, Thratak acts as a bridge between Hatha Yoga and Dhyana Yoga. Tratak is continuous gazing. It is not letting your mind wander. And when you don't let the mind wander, initially it struggles, it fights hard. But if you continue to gaze calmly, slowly the mind stops struggling. For a few moments, it stops. And when the mind ceases to function, the state of no mind is attained. Because the existence of the mind can only be sustained in movement. Thought processes can only be sustained in movement. Mind is a verb. It's a continuous process. When there is no movement, when the thought processes cease, you cannot think. The mind is no more. Full alertness and awareness are necessary because you can gaze even with dead eyes. You're looking at something, yet your mind is somewhere else. You're reading a book, yet registering nothing. You zone out. Seeing in this way leads to nothing. In this practice, you have to be in the zone. The meaning of Tratak is not just your eyes, but your entire existence being focused through your eyes. So it depends on your preference, whatever the object of meditation may be. If you like the flame of a candle, it's fine. If you like darkness, it's also fine. The cross of Christ, the idol of Shiva or the Buddha, or a Yantra, regardless of the object, the essence lies in stopping the mind at one place concentrating it so that internal movements, internal turmoil can cease. 
internal tensions can cease. You're just observing. When the mind comes to a standstill, everything except for the point of focus disappears. Only that one point remains. You might have heard of the story of Arjun as narrated in the Hindu epic Mahabharat. Dronacharya, the esteemed archery instructor, gathered his students, both Kauravs and Pandavs, to assess their proficiency in the noble art. Setting the stage, he positioned an artificial bird atop a grand tree its painted eyes challenging the young warriors. With measured instructions, Dronacharya directed each student to take aim at the bird's eye. Yet, it wasn't merely about hitting the target. Before they can shoot, Dronacharya asks each of them what they see when they look at the bird. Most of the students replied that they saw the tree, leaves and branches. Then came Arjun's moment. His gaze was fixed solely on the bird's eye. When Dronacharya questioned him, Arjun's response was resolute. He saw nothing but the target before him. Except for the bird's eye, the entire world had, as if, ceased to exist for him. With unwavering concentration, Arjun drew his bow and released his arrow. The projectile soared through the air, finding its mark with precision, striking the eye of the bird. Similarly, in the practice of Tratak, besides the object of focus, everything else disappears. They cease to exist for the practitioner. An optical illusion effectively demonstrates this point. Focus your attention on the black plus sign at the center of the image. With sufficient concentration, after a short period, all the pink dots will slowly disappear and you will see only a single green dot rotating. Similarly, this practice demands that your concentration be so intense that nothing else is visible apart from the object of your focus. If something else is visible, it means the mind is still alive and wandering on those things. The goal is the cessation of mind, the state of no mind. In his work, Amanaska Yoga, or the Yoga of No Mind, Goraknath reveals another way of practicing Tratak, an even more advanced way. He writes, Drishti his thira yasya vinayva drishyam, vayu his thiro yasya vinaprayatnam, chittam sthiram yasya vinavalambam, sa eva yogi, sa guru, sa sevya. Or without anything to gaze at, whose gaze remains steady, without any control, whose breath is steady, and without any support, whose mind rests steady, only those yogis are worthy of being a guru. One should serve only them. In this variation, the yogi focuses his gaze on emptiness. He sees nothing specific. The direction of his vision is almost at arm's length outside, as he is not focusing on anything specific. His sight is out of focus. Everything appears blurry to him. His eyes are half closed, half open. Inwardly, he may direct his mind to an internal focal point that could be on the heart, above the head, or between the eyebrows, or any other place suggested by the Guru. By regularly practicing looking outward and focusing inward, mental fluctuations completely dissipate, leading to a state where the existence of the mind ceases, the state of pure awareness. According to Amanaska Yoga, this is the highest state of yogic bliss. Goraknath further explains that before starting the practice, the yogi should find a quiet location and place himself in a comfortable posture. He should gradually relax the body by shifting his awareness to each and every part of the body with a stable and calm mind. By abandoning all worries and completely detaching from all sensory stimuli, he should practice this yoga. In this practice, Goraknath explains there is no effort. If the mind wants to wander somewhere, the practitioner should let it wander. Any attempt to control the mind will keep the eye alive. Whenever you make an effort, 
your ego becomes active and in this state of duality, meditation is never successful. Through regular practice, the mind, after wandering here and there, will eventually cease. It is important that in this state, the I do not remain alive. Ego should end along with the mind, so there is no place for any kind of conscious effort here. This variation is different from traditional Tratak. It is not the use of concentration, but only the use of seeing. Although it is an advanced variation of Tratak, there is a difference between the two. Tratak means to focus the entire concentration on a single point like the flame of a candle. The mind needs to be contracted so that it does not wander here and there. The entire flow of the mind is directed in one direction. It is kept flowing only towards one point so that the whole mind is focused on just one point without any dispersion. The effort is to stabilize the mind at one point, to catch it whenever it wanders and pull it back. But in this variation, it is necessary that you also become empty from within, that you are not forced to focus your mind on the empty space. Instead, looking without any effort, just see, gaze at a space an arm's length away from yourself. You do not make any internal effort to see. You just become empty and free from any tension and then just see. Keep your gaze on that emptiness and let the mind become anchorless. The mind takes the shape of whatever it is focused on, but it will not be able to take the shape of emptiness and will become formless and supportless. The mind will dissolve and merge into consciousness. In traditional Tratak, the practitioner was exerting effort in bringing his consciousness to a point, but in this variation, the practitioner is not going anywhere they are just becoming empty from within and their eyes are open. This is fundamentally different and this process of just seeing is unique. Because when you are just seeing, you are not even attempting to do Tratak. When you are just seeing, your eyes become as empty as the sky. When you make no effort to see, but simply see, you become calm and free from inner tension. The mind becomes devoid of vikalp or thoughts and you attain the state of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Sakatvam